all the fun of the fair, a whirling, twirling, merry-go-round of entertainment that befits Expo 67, the greatest show on earth. It's the greatest world exhibition ever staged, the culmination of four years' effort by the city of Montreal. Candy floss and ice cream are universal symbols of enjoyment, unless you prefer to do it Venetian style. All the trimmings are true Italian, but this is Expo, so the gondolier who uses an outboard motor can be excused for slightly damping the romantic image. Expo authorities haven't missed a trick in their travel arrangements. A Viking cruise may be acceptable to those who like peace and tranquility, but if speed and power are the order of the day, then the hovercraft wins the fare-paying passengers. The pavilions of Russia, Ethiopia, Venezuela, Czechoslovakia and Britain flash by to become brief landmarks. The greatest show on earth deserves the daring spectacle of the greatest show on skis. And even if there's someone clowning about in the water, you still have to admire the skill of it all. Expo is a four-year dream that spells out entertainment and interest for the 60 million visitors who will have come through the turnstiles in six months. No one can complain about not getting value for money. It isn't until you look down from a helicopter that the size of Expo becomes apparent. Every day for over four years, the lorries dumped their loads in the St. Lawrence River and created Ile Notre Dame and doubled the size of Ile Saint-Hélène. When the job was done, Montreal has excavated enough earth to build a complex underground railway system and the islands in the St. Lawrence became the home of Expo. Man and his world, the theme of Expo, covers a world of fun, fantasy and fact. But if you want to see it all, then take a choice of transport. The computer-controlled mini-rail never loses its fascination, but those who like to be a bit more down-to-earth might choose a road train. The youngsters like the pushchair treatment. The English gentleman is only interested in style, naturally. Eastern influence can't be ignored in the Western world, although there's only one route for the English gentleman who enjoys his glass of ale. The Expo has a little bit of England tucked away in La Ronde, and the beer tastes the same, even when it's paid for with Canadian dollars. The buskers bring the atmosphere of Leicester Square to the steps of the French Pavilion. Cyril Jackson goes into his one-man band routine. Who cares if the English are eccentric? It's all fun in the world's latest and greatest fun fair. This is the kind of entertainment you drive up and deliver to the audience, like the skaters who perform on their mobile ice rink. It's the informality of it all that spells success. Just ask the Mexicans.
fun, fantasy and fact. Expo has it all. Expo is geography made human. And it's history too, with a sideshow attraction. And you can see how brave the United Nations would be if they were properly united. Because, just look at geography and history joining hands in a forest of flags. The Carillon with its 600 bells heralds the greatest show on earth. La Ronde will remain long after the bulldozers have moved in to flatten this world fair, but the memory of those six months won't easily be dimmed. Canada launched this colossal exhibition to celebrate the centenary of Confederation, some birthday. Not just a day you'll remember and an evening out you could never equal. Expo 67 is, was and will be an unforgettable and perhaps significant global experience.